Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back. So in this video, we're going to take a look at how we can work with multiple elements in Selenide. So, so far we have learned how we can work with individual element, but we haven't looked at how we can work with multiple elements. So let's see how we can do that in this video. So the test that we're going to be writing is basically going to be getting the text value of all of this navigation elements right over here. So basically we would expect something like home, about, shop, block, contact and my account to be returned back to us. Now clearly we're working with multiple elements over here. So we need to get the text for each individual elements over here. So the very first thing we're going to do is basically get our element selector. So I'm going to right click here and do inspect. And if you notice right here, we are working with primary menu. So this particular ID we have is our primary menu. So that's the one we're going to be targeting and our primary menu is basically this entire thing, the entire navigation menu. And if I open that up, you're going to see I have multiple individual list items. This is all of the list items that are part of my navigation menu. And the ones that we are interested in are the ones over here. So menu item 489, 491, 567 and all the way till over here. So we have roughly six elements right here, which will equate to home, about, shop, block, contact and my account. The rest that we have at the bottom are the just the icons which are part of our navigation menu. So these ones we actually do not care about. So we're going to ignore that at this moment. So let's go ahead and create a unique selector for all of this list menu items over here. So first I'm going to do my unique ID, which is primary menu. So I will add that over here. So I'll say primary menu. And you can see that it is unique. So I have one of one node right here. And then I'm going to do my list. So I'm working with my list. So I will say LI. And then I have individual IDs for all of this. So I'm just going to say ID. Now, since these are dynamically generated, I know that the ending is changing. This is 489, 491 and so on. So how can I go ahead and actually say that I only care about the first item here, which is menu dash item. So if it's unique ID or dynamic ID, I don't really care. As long as the starting starts with menu dash item, that's good enough for me. So in CSS selector, we can do star equal, and then I can just say menu item. So now you can see I'm getting all the six nodes right over here. So this is basically what we're interested in. I'm getting in one of six, and basically I'm saying list ID star equal menu dash item. So this is how in CSS selector you can say that it contains or basically it starts with menu item and after that I don't really care whatever it can be as long as it starts with that give me all of that notes. So this is going to be the selector that we're going to be working with. Alright now let's head over back to IntelliJ and start creating our test. So here we have our previous test which was test page URL and title and then interacting with elements. Now in this one I'm going to create a new one so I'll do command n or you can do control n and then do test method and here I will add in test multiple elements. Now the first thing we're going to need is our expected links because we want to compare it with our expected right and the expected is home about shop block contact in my account. So we have to create that list over here. So I'm going to say list and it's part of a string. So I'm going to say list string. I'm going to give it a name. I will say expected links. And then I'm going to create my list. So I'll say list dot off. And then here I will add in all of my lists. So I'll say home, about, shop, and blog, contact. And then finally we have my account. Now remember this is a list. So you got to import it. So at the top you can see we have an import java.util.list. Now we're going to go ahead and create our selector. So if you remember previously, the way we were doing that was just simply doing dollar and then we would do buy.id, whatever we were doing over there. So here, the way we will do is I'm going to create a new variable and I'm going to call that one link list. So I'll say link lists and then we're going to put our CSS selector over here. So instead of doing a single dollar, I'm going to do double dollar. Now, whenever we use double dollar in Selenide, we're actually saying that we're working with multiple elements. So it will expect an elements collection to be returned back. So here I'm simply going to paste in that selector that we created before. Now this is my elements collection. So I'm going to go ahead and assign that over here. So I will say elements collection and the variable name is link list. So pretty much this is the main thing that you need to be aware of. So when you're working with multiple elements, you need to add in double dollar sign 
and then obviously put in whatever your selector. So it will expect that you're returning multiple elements back. And those multiple elements are called elements collection. Now let's go ahead and try to simply print this out to see whether we actually get all of those texts back or not. So to print it out, I will simply do SOUT and it will automatically generate this for me. And I'm gonna do link list dot. And here you can see I have all the expected ones. So I'm gonna say this time I need text. So we are saying link list dot text basically will give me all of the text item as part of my link list collection. So really simple. I'm gonna to try to run this and see what we get back. So to run it as usual, I'm gonna click on this green button over here and we'll say run. Now it's not gonna run right now because we gotta make sure that we are first opening the URL and we were doing that in our previous test. So I'm just gonna copy that here and then I'm gonna paste it right here. All right, so we are opening the URL now. We have our expected links and we have our selector and now we're gonna print it out. So let's run it again. Okay, so we just ran it. I'm gonna open this up. And you can see that we're getting all of those expected link text returned. So we have home, about, shop, blog, contact, and my account. So this is perfect because this is exactly what we needed. Now we can go ahead and actually compare this with our expected value. So to do that, I'm gonna simply go ahead and assign this text to a variable. So I will say link list text is equal to all of this. And this is part of a list string. So I'll create list string. There you go. So I have a list string, which is link list text. And that's what I'm getting returned back over here. Now I will add in my assertion. So the assertion is simply going to be assert equals. And here I want to assert my link list text with the expected links. And that's it. Let's try to run this to see whether our test would work. And there you go, we just ran and our test successfully passed, awesome. So to make sure this is actually working, we're gonna try to fail our test. So maybe instead of home, I will say home one, and then I will try to run it again. And there you go, we got an error. And if you take a look at the error, you can see it was saying the expected was home one and the actual was actually home. So that means our assertion is actually working. So that's perfect. Now there's two ways of actually handling this assertion. I could have done it this way. Another way that I could have done this is simply taking advantage of my link list and totally ignoring this. We don't have to get the text first. We can directly retrieve the text from our selector right here. So I'm gonna say link list dot, and I'm gonna say it should have, and then here we're gonna say we need text. So I'll say text, and you can see the moment I typed in text, we're getting collection condition dot text. What this will do is it will go ahead and get the text out of my link list. So out of that entire selector over here, since it's part of a collection, it will get the text of the entire collection and I can compare it with my expected, which is expected links. So this is the nice shorter way. What this will do is I can actually comment this part out as well. So I don't really need this and I don't really need this anymore. I can simply have a one liner, which is saying my link list should have text and the text should be expected links right here. Let's run it again. This should actually fail because it's gonna fail because of this reason. So let's run it just to make sure if it's failing for the right reason. And as you can see, it's actually waiting quite a bit longer this time. And the reason for that is because our should have, have a default timeout. So it's waiting for the default timeout. It's doing multiple retries to make sure it actually gets this expected link. In our case, that didn't happen. So you can see we're getting our actual, which was all of this and the expected had home one. So we clearly know that this is working. I can remove this. I can even try to run it again. And this way our test would successfully work. And there you go, our test successfully passed in this case. So whenever you have an option to use assert equals versus using a selenite assertion, it's always preferred to use selenite assertion because you're gonna get additional advantages of retry and wait capabilities. So that's the reason I kind of went with this one. All right, but the main focus of this video was how you can go ahead and work with multiple elements. And the way we can do this is by using this double dollar sign, which will simply go ahead and return the element collection. And that element collection, you can go ahead and then verify whatever you need to do from there. In our case, we are simply going ahead and verifying the text, but you can pretty much do anything you want. You can get the text, you can manipulate the text and then do your assert equals in terms of the manipulated text.
All right, that's it for this video, guys. If you'd like to support my work, please make sure to subscribe to this channel and hit that like button on this video. You could also support me by sharing this video with others. Thanks for watching, everyone. I will see you all in the next one.